Hello everyone, welcome to video lecture on software engineering. I am Sunanda Patra, lecturer in department of BCA, UN Autonomous College of Science and Technology. So, this is our first class and we are going to learn introduction to software engineering. So, let us have a look into contents. So, in this video lecture we are going to cover what is software engineering, what are the nature of a software system and what are the challenges we are facing in larger projects. Okay? So, to start a course we must know what actually the course deals with. So, what is software engine engineering? If someone asks us the what is software engineering then we must uh, answer him or answer her properly based on these derivations like we can call software engineering is an engineering approach to develop a software. So, now the question may arise is what is engineering approach and how the engineering approach is uh, different from the traditional approach to develop a software. Okay? To derive this difference between the engineering approach and the traditional approach just have a look into the building construction analogy. Suppose someone asked to construct a building like this, like a small building like this. So, what actually we do? We are imply our uh, basic intuitions like we must have some bricks, we must have some cement, we must have colors. Then we will start building a small walls and by uh, building small, small walls and merging them, we can succeed into building a small building like this. But uh, in case someone asks to uh, build a larger complex, 30 or 40 or more uh, floors or a uh, larger complex, then in this case the basic intuition cannot work. If we will proceed with our basic intuition, then the building may collapse, the building may have some uh, poor quality or the building will never end. Okay? So, in this software, this is also we have uh, sorry in this software uh, engineering we have like these problems of uh, building construction analogy like someone asks to develop a one time program that is of 10 or 30 or 40 lines then we can go for our basic intuition like uh, we can develop a flow chart then we can go for our uh, algorithm then we can write our program into uh, in within uh, 30 to 40 line of course. But in case of software or larger projects where the software contains 1000 or 2000 line of course, that case the basic intuition will not work. So, in that case we have to follow some engineering approach that means we have we must have some technique, we must have some tools, we must have some guidelines that will direct us to a larger software. So, the alternative definition of software engineering can be a systematic collection of past experience. That means, we must look into our past experience, how we developed a successful software and how we delivered the customer with a successful software and from that we get some techniques, we get some methodologies and we get some guidelines and imply those techniques, methodology and guidelines from our past experience to this current software, then we can develop a successful software. Okay? So, by looking at the name software engineering, there are actually two terms, one is software and another is engineering. So, let us understand uh, differently. So, first go for the engineering. The engineering is what? Engineering is the process of designing or building something that serves a particular purpose. That means, when we want some project or uh, uh, in a beginning of a process, we must desire some output. So, to get that output, we must follow some set of processes and after that set of processes, we will get some desired output. That is our engineering. So, what is software? Software means, software is a program or a set of program containing instructions like engineering, uh, engineering can be defined as a set of process like that software can be defined uh, by the set of programs which contain some instructions which provides desirable functionalities. Okay? So, in case of software, 
while I am talking about software is a collection of programs, the program not only contains the instruction that also contains some data structures. Why we need data structure? Because we need data structure to manipulate our information. So, while we are talking about software, that manipulation of information is very important because you can take any software, that software will take some user input, then that uh, user input will get manipulated by the data structure and th then after that will give some useful information or useful or desirable functionalities. Okay? So, by combining software and engineering, we can say that software engineering is a systematic approach to the development, operation and maintenance of the desired software of the customer. Okay? While talking about systematic approach, the systematic approach not only deals with the development of the software, that also deals with the maintenance and that is the most important phase. Because while we deliver the software to the user and uh, by the day by day the user wants a modification or user requirement are uh, growing. So, in that case the company or we, we who provide the software to the user, we must provide that customer facility to accommodate those user requirements or user changes. Okay? So, next is what are the nature of a software? engineering. Okay? So, in our day to day life, we are actually encountered with various types of software systems. Like, we may uh, use some different types of application areas like um, that may be in business domain, that may be in engineering domain or the software system that may be in scientific application. And come to next, there are very wide range of software that may be simplex or that may be complex, that may be internal use like suppose take an example, we are using a software like uh, examination management system software where we are putting all the records of a student and publishing the results that is only for internal use that means we only we the UA not nomos college only use that software to publishing the result or the software solution may be for public use like uh, suppose we are taking an example uh, railway reservation system that is actually we are uh, familiar with. The railway reservation system is an example of very successful software system nowadays. Okay? So, uh, or the software system may be single function like it can do only single task like uh, payroll or it can be application that will cover all functionalities or we can say that it may be enterprise wide software or the software solution uh, may work from one location or it may be from distributed location. The software solution may be a best operating system or the software solution is for real time operating system or the software system is only meant for in giving information to the public or people or the software system may be mission critical. Okay? So, now the point is we have actually a variety of software systems that we are encounter it in our day to day life and th that uh, nowadays the computer software is touching the aspect of all human lives. Okay? Next that is challenge in larger projects. So, developing a large or complex software application is very challenging because of these facts. First one is effort intensive. That means, when we are working with a larger software or working with a larger project, we must work it out very carefully and we must like uh, your design phase, your user requirement phase, your coding phase, all that phase should be done very carefully. Next is it involves high cost. That means, if uh, the software development uh, is uh, unsuccessful, then the total investment goes waste. Okay? So, next is it may take long development time. As I said, we are working with a larger project. So, it may it is obvious that it will take long development time. Next is changing needs of users that we must keep in account that the user may change that their needs after delivering the software. So, next is uh, there may be high risk of failures like uh, after delivering the software to the user, 
the user may deny to accept or it, it does not meet the performance or the software is up to this like it is impossible to maintain it up to date. So, these are challenges in larger projects. So, we must know that the developing a larger project is quite different from the developing a one time program. In case of one time, one time program that only contains 10 to 30 line of codes. So, in that case what we did, uh, we just uh, write the code, we just try it out and uh, we see actually it uh, gives us some useful information or not, then we throw it away. But here in our software engineering course, we are not dealing with those uh, one time program, we are dealing with software that is long duration. Okay? So, in our next videos, we will learn what are the characteristics of um, software projects and what are the software crisis. Thank you.